Well, God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooded here. I'm honored to speak to you today, and I pray that you're having a wonderful day. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are going to rejoice, my friends, and be glad in it. I have a passage of scripture that I'd like to read to you that I believe will bless you real good. Psalms chapter number 46 and verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength and a presence help in trouble. God is our refuge and strength, a present help in trouble. Present help in trouble in layman terms is help that can be found when you need it. Help that can be found when you need it. I want you to, if you have your Bible, Bible handy, just get your Bible out. And if, and if you write in your Bible, I write in mine and, and you ha- do highlighters and all that. Just, just highlight that, uh, 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 a, a very present help in trouble. That is help that can be found when you need it. And the writer here in verse two goes to the extreme or he goes to times like these. He says, therefore, will we not fear though the earth be removed and the mountains be carried uh, into the midst of the sea, though the waters there thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Here's what he tells us. There is a river. The streams thereof shall make glad the city of God. What is the writer? What is David saying here? What is uh, the sons of Korah saying in this passage? Even when society descends into chaos, there is a place of calm. There is a place of solace. There is a river and the streams of the river, the streams thereof will make glad the city of God. And the river that I speak of is our relationship with the God of the Bible. I'm glad, my friends, that I have found the God of the Bible to be help that can be found when I need it. One of my favorite songs that I sing from time to time is when I need him most. Jesus steps right in when I need him most. And I'll tell you, if you trust him and you stand on the word of God, and many of you who are watching today have this testimony that when you needed the Lord uh, the most, when uh, times got hard, he stepped in and he fixed it. And listen, we're living in a day now where where society uh, have lost their minds. There's there is chaos. I'm telling you, the earth is moved, uh, uh, and the moving of the earth here. The the writer is speaking about. Chaotic times. We're living in a chaotic time. Up is down. Down is up. Male is female. Uh, female is male. Or oh, you got the gender non-binary. We've got problems with our bank banking systems. We see violence uh, in the streets. We see DAs who will not prosecute violent offenders. And uh, uh, there are many crimes now that are not prosecuted at all. We see the upheaval in the weather all of the snow out in California and in other areas in the great uh, uh, north where they would uh, have uh, 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 events that depended on the rivers and different things freezing and the rivers haven't even frozen. And you see, we're in that time. We're in a time of chaos. What's going on, my friends? I'll tell you, sin, sin. People have turned their backs on God. Man is walking immorally. Now you can call it global warming. You can call it whatever you want. But there is a lot of chaos going on. We look at our political structure and our system. We see this open border and what's going on with it. We see a a, a merging between uh, Russia and China. That ain't good. And you see all of these things going on. And in America, what uh, many of our institutions are trying to do now is make sure the kids are woke. Make sure we're majoring in things that's going to only make us a weaker nation. And we see polls taking place now that that says that fewer and fewer people are religious and uh, are turning to the God of the Bible. And I want to say to you, he's the only hope. He's the answer. 
and, uh, and we're going to trust him and we're going to watch God take care of us. Now, right quick, there has been in the media of late a lot of coverage of people being killed. And the latest that we saw was what took place in Nashville at the Covenant Christian School. It was a Presbyterian parochial school. Oh, uh, from what I understand, a wonderful school that uh, did what it was supposed to do. And yet six people were brutally murdered at the school, uh, three in their 60s and three nine-year-olds, including the pastor's daughter, and people's hearts are broken and are shattered. This is, these things ought not to happen in society. And Brother Gary, uh, I, I hate to bring this up at this time, and, and, uh, and, as, hot, and as heartbreaking as this is, I just have to throw a little aside on it. Uh, th this would be a light day in Chicago. So it's amazing to me of the wickedness that's going on in society and uh, this shooter. You know, the media, oh, they're struggling with the shooter because the shooter doesn't fit the narrative. The shooter is not a far right, Trump loving, America loving, flag hugging loon. The, the, the shooter is a member of the protected class. As a matter of fact, there have been those who have tried to blame the school and blame the shooter's parents because the parents wouldn't accept the shooter. Yeah, that's the problem. Mom and dad don't believe that their daughter uh, can become, have become a guy. And so he goes up and shoot, shoot up the school. So you blame mom and dad uh, because of uh, this wickedness. And they are subtle, well, not so subtle, uh, hints. And some things are said outright about blaming the school. And it's a Christian school. And, and uh, I, uh, this is indeed a hate crime. Uh, uh, I believe that among the reasons, I believe this, among the reasons the school was targeted is for its values. Uh, and here is a, a young lady, a young lady uh, trying to be uh, a, a young man. And, uh, and, uh, people are reporting on the news that the, that the, uh, that the young lady here had, uh, mental issues. Uh, oh, you're talking about, uh, my position is, are you saying mental issues other than believing she's a guy? I mean, that's a mental issue. And, and that's the problem with the world today. See, we are, we are trying to embrace lunacy. We are embracing wickedness. We are embracing mass confu confusion in people. And we wonder why these confusing things take place. Uh, Nashville school mass shooting killer was emotionally torn apart over close friends, untimely death. Apparently, according to this, uh, Aubrey Hale, the shooter, was totally devastated after Sidney Sims was killed in a car crash in August. Former classmate uh, Shamir Hardcastle told NBC News, Hale definitely admired Sims, and they together attended Isaiah T. Caswell Middle School of the Arts and Nashville School of the Arts, Hardcastle actually said. Maria Cullamy, one of Hale's teachers, former teachers at another school, recalled that Sims' untimely death was an emotional wrecking ball for her, for her former student. Cullamy paraphrased Hale's social media post uh, about the accident, stating, Something to the effect that Sims was all that mattered. And I miss you forever. Now, I wonder what kind of relationship was this? Why is this even mentioned? Uh, I didn't bring it up, but uh, could it be that uh, a, a motivation for taking the lives of innocent people who had nothing whatsoever to do with uh, the death of, uh, of uh, Sims, uh, 
They had nothing to do with her being killed in an accident. Could it be that that this was part of the motivation? Now, we saw this in the summer of 2020, and we were told that it was all right. Uh, businesses were destroyed. Courthouses were burned. Uh, people's homes were burned. Traffic was stopped. People marched all over the world. Billions of dollars of damage was done uh, in the name of George Floyd. But it wasn't done merely in the town or on the street where uh, Floyd's life was taken. It was done all over. And uh, it was it was considered all right. So businesses suffered. People suffered. People were killed who had nothing to do with the death of George Floyd. So I guess now if you lose a loved one or if you lose a friend or if you lose someone who matters to you, uh, it's all right to go kill people who have nothing to do with it. My friends, these are chaotic times. I have here uh, a story of a, listen to this, black transgender woman killed outside workplace, co-worker charged with her murder. All right. Now, this is the name of the, uh, the, uh, the article. A disturbing wave of black transgender killings has stricken communities across the U.S., leaving many worried and in in search of answers, in search for answers. Now, a recent report has revealed that a Rwandan immigrant who identified as transgender was brutally shot and killed at Kentucky JBS food plant her place of employment, Amani We Taho Zaki, known as Zaki by f- uh, family and friends, was killed by a co worker, Eliberto uh, Roez. This person and another individual both admitted to killing the victim. Now, what is sad is, first of all, uh, I mourn, I'm sorry, that Imani We Tahoe was killed. Uh, I don't think uh, the person should have been killed. But my problem is, in reporting the news, organized media lies to you now. They keep saying, her death, her this, her that. Saints, this was a man. Two men killed a man. Now, I do not support them killing that man. I most certainly don't think they should have murdered that man. I don't know what the circumstances were. Unless that man was trying to murder them, they had no right to kill that man. They have a right to defend themselves. They have a right to self-defense. But if they kill this man in a un- illegal way, uh, then they should be prosecuted to the full extent of the law, especially if this man was not trying to kill them. But the problem here is they're calling this dead man a woman. Now, how are you supposed to trust the news? What are you supposed to think when now people whom we have turned to and trusted for years to tell us the truth, to report stories uh, to us, even these people now are woke and they won't get the gender right. And you would think that they killed this six foot plus tall woman when who was killed was a man and I, don't you think it's strange that that uh, of late uh, uh, the last three shooters who have killed people in these mass shootings uh, identify as transgender and one he, he's just he's nothing so I guess he's everything he's gender non-binary whatever that means But God only made two sexes. God made them male and he made them female. And these, uh, these people, uh, this, the fact that they are transgender dealing with these things, that as time passes, oh, that gets lost in the news. That gets lost. That doesn't get mentioned. That gets played down because we're dealing with a protected class. This is chaotic, my friends. And what are we to do? We are to turn to the stream that exists in the God of the Bible. We're to pray for people, ask God to deliver, ask God to save, ask the Lord to set free. And, and while we're praying that the Lord 
Lord will save these people, deliver these people, that God will bring safety to our schools and safety to our neighborhoods. We must, my friends, at least be willing to tell the truth. I mean, you're talking about a case of the emperor having no clothes. You're talking about a case of people just, I mean, they're just falling in line and in lockstep. And if you're not careful, they'll make you think that you're crazy as they refer to men as women and women as men. And they, you, you can't trust whatever they report to you. When we hear about the collapse of the bank out in, in Silicon Valley, do you think we'll ever know what happens? Do you think we'll ever get to the bottom of some of the things that they're reporting to us in Washington, D.C.? And for a free society to work, there has to be a unbiased press that reports on things fairly, that we're in trouble when the arms of government are being weaponized. You know, you know how you used to beat your political opponent? You get more votes than they do. Now they send the government after you and try to destroy you even before you can run. What are we becoming? A banana republic? Could it be that the chaos that, that the Psalm speaks of, that we're right in the midst of it. But even if we are, my friends, Jesus loves you, Jesus loves me, and Jesus is watching over us. Yes, I talk about these current events. I talk about them when I preach. I talk about them when I teach because nothing is more current than the Bible. This book that I have before me right now is more current than tomorrow morning's newspaper. Glory to God. This is not some archaic out of step book to be discarded. Uh, you, hey, do you see where they're calling for a, uh, a moratorium, calling for a six month uh, stoppage to artificial intelligence? What's going on with that? But I know this, long ago, this old book talked about the beast and its image. This old book said that men would not be able to buy, saw, sell, nor eat until they had the mark of the beast on their forehead or in their hand. The technology exists today to make your hand a credit card, your forehead the credit card. Your idea, you, you, you go to the airport and you got uh, businesses set up now where all you got to do is look uh, and let them read your eyes and they will clear you to go through uh, security. All kinds of technological advances are taking place. And it could be that John, who wrote the book of Revelation, could be that all the prophecies that was given in this ancient book, that man is just now beginning to catch up with the book. But there is a theme in this old book that never changes. And it is this. The Lord is faithful to those who put their trust in him. And my friends, I am going to trust the God of the Bible, and I trust that you will do the same. Now, I want to invite you tonight to our service here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, because I tell you, God is going to bless us real good. I'm pulling this out because I want to read a little something here. Uh, I have a tremendous uh, blessing for you tonight, and God is going to bless you real good. Now, by the time our service starts, I, my friends, will be <clears throat> hopefully landing in Jackson, Mississippi. We're having a tremendous rally in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, tomorrow night, we're going to tour Jackson, uh, Mississippi tomorrow. Uh, the National Men's Ministry. We're headed to Jackson, Mississippi, and God is going to bless in a mighty way. And we're going there for a rally with the saints in Jackson. We thank God for Bishops Preston, Middleton, and Dean, and uh, the wonderful saints of God in Jackson, Mississippi. We're going to have church down there. But tonight, God has touched my heart, and uh, we have a special treat for you that you do not want to miss. Tamika Douglas, she's a member of our church. She's a national evangelist in the Church of God in Christ. And listen, I have right here in my hands a copy of her intercessory prayer um, 
CD that she made, and uh, it's an awesome CD, an awesome prayer. You need to get it if you don't have it, and uh, you can find her speaking and praying every first and third Monday on Facebook. Uh, she's a faithful, longtime member of the upper room. She's highly anointed, and she will be delivering the word of the Lord tonight. And my friends, I do not want you, I do not want you to say to, to yourself or to think, well, maybe uh, this will be a good night for me to miss. No, this will be a good night for you to stay tuned in. And you will see that God has richly blessed us here at the upper room with powerful preachers, powerful teachers, men and women who can deliver the word of God with power and authority. And so we're excited about what God's going to do. I'm excited about the things that's happening in this world. And I want to invite you to join me here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for good preaching and good teaching by evangelist Tamika Douglas. She's going to bless you real good. Good. God's going to move by his spirit. You know, I said, invite me here, but I won't be here, but she will. And the Lord is going to use her. My friends, I love you. I thank you for your support. I thank you for your prayers. And listen, as I end this, hey, tap into that river. The streams thereof make glad the city of of God. Oh, I am so grateful that in all of this and all that's going on in the world, that there's a spiritual place. Hallelujah. There's a place in God that God has that keeps us from cracking, from losing our minds, from falling uh, to the chaos of this world. There's a place of peace. There's a place of calm. There's a peace that passeth all understanding. Where is it, preacher? It's not in a bottle. It's not in a pill. It's not in drugs. It doesn't come in a syringe. You know where you can find it? You can find it on your knees. You can find it in your den with the word of God in your hands. You can find it at a good church where the Bible is preached. You can find it, praise the Lord, alone there in your car. Glory to God. Just sitting there and talking to the Lord after you pulled over. And uh, sometimes when I'm praying to God, when I'm driving, I tend to speed. So pray for me. But uh, uh, listen, listen, there is peace. There is peace. I'm talking to somebody, Brother Gary. I want to let this go out and ran long. But there's peace. There's peace. Let me, let me just pray. I'll close that with a prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for the peace of your people. In these chaotic times, in these times, oh God, as we said earlier, when up is down, down is up, green is blue, blue is green, left is right, right is left. Oh God, east is west, west is east. North is south and south is north. God, everything is, seems to me, it gets chaos everywhere. In the midst of it all, oh God, I'm grateful that we have peace in you. Peace in your name. Jesus, Jesus, oh God, your name, just the mention of your name. It's like fire in winter's cold. It's like pure, precious gold. Jesus, just the mention of your name. God bless you, my friends. We'll see you tonight.